Okay, everybody, good morning. Um, thank you for that kind introduction, Tony. I will admit that I was a little bit afraid of um, Tony's introduction. So, uh, okay, so I will talk a little bit fast, if you don't mind. Uh, we do have time for questions after the talk. It, it is a long presentation. I have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, so, you know, excuse me for going a little fast. So there we go. So this is the, the index of my talk. I'm just going to give you a very brief history of what flying sharks is, and then we're going to go into the specific details of each of the four shark or the four species I will be talk to you. I will be talking to you about. So we're based in Portugal. Uh, we work mostly out of the mainland uh, Portugal, both the west and the south shores, but we do some work off in the islands as well, uh, particularly in the Azores. We do some uh, work out of uh, São Tomé, which is on uh, equatorial West Africa, which is something you will hear Nunu, my colleague and our science officer, talk about on Wednesday as well. We're doing quite a bit of conservation work out there. Well, this is just a quick map of some of the places we've been doing work with, some clients, some partners. Um, and obviously, needless to say, this, the, the um, presentation will be available through our friends from Animal Professionals, so don't worry about all these details in cities because you'll get that later. So in the south of Portugal, we mostly work with commercial fishermen. They target bluefin tuna, and I know what you're all thinking, bluefin tuna, bleh, not, a, not a good thing, but these guys do work extremely sustainably. Um, they get about a thousand tuna a year. Their operation is closely monitored and regulated by ICAT. They do have an extremely wide mesh size uh, on their barrier. So it is an extremely sustainable operation. And we've been working with, with them for the 10 years of uh, flying sharks. And I was working with them even before that while I was working at the uh, Oceanario. So this is me working on my L5-S1 herniated disc when I was young, holding big heavy bags, uh, not bending my knees and bending my back because I'm stupid. Um, but we do get very good quality animals using plastic bags, latex gloves. It is a very non-invasive fishing method. We do a lot of work in the Azores, as I was telling you. We collect ourselves. We also work with um, commercial fishermen, pilot fish, and a couple of other species I'll be telling you about. These are just some of the species that we collect out there. Uh, these are some of the ornamentals that we collect in deep water, like those uh, really cool anthiazanthias. We collect them at 50 meters deep, which is kind of cool. On the west coast, which is actually where I teach, our team there is exclusively made from my students. Um, current students, former students. We have a really good relationship going with the school and it works really well. We do some invertebrates, some fish. And then we put all these things inside small plastic bags and boxes. We drive them to UPS, who delivers them to our clients in 24 hours, which is a nice deal. Every now and then, we do the big stuff. And the big, the big stuff, of course, we have to put inside tanks. We will either do a charter with them, or we fly them using DHL, for example. One thing that I should say we're quite proud of is that we've been using these uh, protein skimmers right over there, um, and they work exceptionally well. They, they do wonders for the water quality in transit, even when we're flying, which is really cool. Uh, we do move a lot of stuff by uh, ship from the Azores to the mainland. The reason I have that, that image there on the lower left corner is because when moving stuff by ship from the Azores, a lot of times there will be containers with cows. And there were a few times when our staff was not allowed to be on the boat because the cow staff needed to come as well. How did we solve that? Our staff learned how to take care of the cows. So now our staff staff comes with the fish, takes care of the fish, and takes care of the cows as well, which is a very cool arrangement. Uh, this is some of the papers we've been doing over the years. We have the Flying Sharks Research Fund that you have all contributed towards. We've given uh, over 50,000 euros in scholarships to students over the years. Finally, let me get on to the, our first species of the day, pilot fish. So we collect these in the Azores. W um, this is a quick breakdown of the subjects we'll be covering. Our guys go out 25 miles, uh, nautical miles, of course. Uh, they use these big tanks. They're nearly three feet wide. And they basically uh, look for dead whale carcasses. Uh, that's what they do. We, we have a partnership with the whale watching boats. Whenever there's a dead whale carcass, there will be a lot of sharks feeding on that carcass. And there will be a lot of pilot fish um, swimming around those sharks. So that's how we do it. This is a quick video 
of the guys collecting with the, the dead whale carcass. Let me just uh, talk over this and say that in order to save fuel and time, because we're Portuguese, we're very poor, so we have to save all the time, uh, these guys actually tied off to the dead whale carcass and slept. They spent the night there and continued collecting the day after, which made it very pleasant for their girlfriends when they got home, who didn't allow them inside the house for two weeks. Anyway, let me just move on. So you see the pilot fish there. I'll just skip to the next video, which is actually the pilot fish in a small tank on board the boat. You know, the, so we catch them by hook and line out in the ocean. And then, of course, there's a little puncture wound, but that yields nicely after a few days. And I'll just move right along. So this is something we kind of stumbled upon almost by accident. Uh, we've been using betadine, just very regular, normal betadine bought out of a supermarket. Uh, and we do 48-hour uh, baths at one milliliter per 100 liters, so 0.1 milliliter per cubic meter. We do a 48-hour treatment. We let the fish rest for 24 hours, and then we do another 24-hour treatment. And uh, we repeat this up to four times, and this is proven extremely helpful in healing small wounds and preventing problems. Now, once we got the pilot fish the first time, we actually brought them to Lisbon, to the mainland by ship, again, as I mentioned before, uh, inside that big 40-foot container with some tanks, uh, protein skimmers, as I was saying before. Then we moved that container, we put it on the back of a truck, and the guys basically drove it all around Europe, um, delivering the pilot fish to the multiple institutions that they had um, that are ordered it. So four days by sea plus another eight days by road. We didn't have a single loss because the water quality kept being changed and we add a lot of supplements uh, bicarbonate and carbonate and amquel and all of that combined made for really good water quality. Um, so this is a quick video of some pilot fish being introduced to Oceanopolis in Brest and we have some friends from Oceanopolis. Exactly. So this is just a couple of seconds. Let me just show you the process very quickly. Truck is pulling over. The guys are disinfecting their hands. They're going to put on the latex gloves right after. We are very paranoid about this sort of thing. It's not, trust me, I'm not Put it, we didn't put this on the video just for show. We, we are very, very paranoid about this infection and all of that because it does make a tremendous difference, as you know, all of you know, in the, in the long run. So we catch them with a rubber net. We'll then put them inside a plastic bag, which you'll see right after. And then we rush them to their new quarantine. And that's how they are all moved. And the process of transport and introduction was very successful. I will tell you in just a few slides what happened after. So let's just jump very quickly, move right along. Now, this was done by truck, but then it got to the point where we needed to move some fish in boxes, in, in, um, in plastic bags. And of course, we need to do some simulations before. Uh, we run a lot of simulations. We did a lot of charts. We looked at um, dissolved oxygen. We looked at pH. Uh, we figured out that by using bicarbonate and carbonate, and also Amquel, uh, an ammonia quencher, an ammonia detoxifier, and also using ice. Uh, so all of these different trials that we ran, we got to the conclusion that by using all of these things, we would get significantly better pH at the end of 24 or plus hours. We, the other thing we also do these days is we actually drive to Madrid. Madrid is a five hour drive from where we are, but from Madrid, we get to most um, international airports faster than through Lisbon. Lisbon always needs to make a stop somewhere. And by driving to Madrid, we actually save time and we can fly directly to Chicago or many other cities, San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, anywhere. And this actually saves a lot of time off the trip. So finally, the results. We had 100% survival on all the road transports. Introductions were quite um, successful. But we do lose some animals after introduction to predation, which is honestly something we were not expecting to happen. We thought, well, the sharks will recognize the pilot fish as a friend. But they don't. They don't. So there's, there's quite a few losses to predation. So that's something you know, that we all need to work on and, and see how we can work around this stuff. Okay, let's go to the um, 
yellow mouth barracuda, which has to be collected using a knotless mesh. This is extremely important. These are very, very delicate animals. They will not tolerate a regular mesh. Uh, also, the other thing which is quite hard for us Portuguese, we're, we're kind of clumsy and crazy sometimes, we have to work extremely slowly and, and not talk loudly and not be crazy at all, we, which is, again, very hard for us. Uh, but we have to just be very relaxed when we're collecting these things, otherwise they'll spook and, uh, and swim against the, the, nesh, the, the mesh. So once they collect, they're collected, we put them in holding, we feed them with live uh, smelt, we also treat them with betadine, same slide as you've seen just a couple of slides before. When we pack or we do anything, again, everybody needs to be relaxed, everything needs to be very quiet. We use a red light. Uh, I, I was wondering what type of picture to use here when uh, talking about red lights. I went with the skeletons because I didn't want to disturb people on a Monday. Good stuff. Anyway, uh, feeding is, a, is an issue with these guys. Uh, they are very, very aggressive uh, feeders, so we need to throw way more food than normally so that the big animals are busy eating all that food, and that gives the chance uh, to the smaller animals to actually feed. If we throw just a little bit of food, they will kill each other, um, um, basically going crazy over that small amount of food. So lots and lots of food. Again, trials. It's, uh, 48 hours of fasting, bicarb and carbonate, and actually using Amquel and betadine, a small uh, that um, solution, that concentration of betadine that I was telling you before, we actually use this in transport and some ice, and all of this together makes for really good results on pH and dissolved oxygen. Again, with the betadine, best results. Quick video of the guys collecting the barracuda in our holding tank, plastic bag, uh, latex gloves, a small ring that you will see the guy using to hold the plastic bag open just to be absolutely certain that the animals don't get touched by anything uh, else. Let's just watch that segment right there and I'll move right along. And I'm almost done. Okay, we're gonna go to the underwater vision of a barracuda going into the bag. It's very exciting. Look at that, okay. Nobody ever saw something like that before. Okay, good stuff. Um, and uh, so transport in the um, introduction was very, very successful. Didn't have any problems moving these guys in, in um, uh, styrofoam boxes, which brings us right along to catfish, which we moved to Springfield, Missouri, to Mr. Holland Marshall sitting right there. A very successful transport. So these guys get big. They get very, very, very big. We're talking three meters, sometimes bigger than that. So this, uh, this animal was actually collected by our friends from the Saragossa Aquarium in Spain. And the transport, when, when this challenge was given to us, it was a big thing because the animal was very big. The distance was very large because Springfield is eight hours away from Chicago, which is the nearest international airport. And the paperwork, because catfish have some problems. They have parasites. They're an introduced species. They're an alien species in, in uh, Spain. So there's a hell of a lot of paperwork, veterinary wise to work on, but what we, we managed, we built a really uh, nice custom box, very, very heavy, uh, that we built from scratch. We used these really cool locks. There was a lot of calculations to calculate precisely just how much power goes into those locks, because we didn't want to, on arrival, have the guys undoing a bunch of bolts, so we used these fast locks, but again, a lot of physics went into what exactly needed to be done there. Uh, this box alone, I could stay here for hours telling you about different features that we had for, to hook up to shore power and everything. Um, IATA approved for flying, of course. That's the fish inside the box with some water. Uh, that's the, the routing, you know, Zaragoza, we drove to Madrid, fly to Chicago, then drive to Springfield. That was a 40-hour uh, trip in total. That's the box getting ready to fly to Chicago. And finally, everything worked out really well. The fish is alive and well, swimming in Springfield, which is really, really cool. Finally, I'll finish off with this um, grouper, which we caught in the Azores inside a very, very large trap. 
uh, which goes down to 20 something meters. Uh, the trap actually has two compartments, one for small fish, one for big fish, and then of course one of the aquarists, whenever they behave badly, we put them in the trap, which is uh, convenient. And then we throw this trap in the water. Once a decent sized grouper goes inside, we haul it to the surface very, very slowly, of course. We feed them with frozen mackerel and sardines, squid, etc. And then it got moved to Lisbon, again, by ship. One very important thing, the, notice the little note I had there, no shopping. So when you travel by ship, you have to remember you're gonna be out on the water for four days. There's no um, Home Depot. There's nowhere you can go to for, for parts, so you have to prepare uh, adequately. Uh, the protein skimmer again, we have this really cool valve system that allows us to do water changes on all of the tanks at the same time. Very successful trip. We actually, I have some students working on the grouper. Uh, they have found some parasites. One parasite is actually a new species. So we may have the whatever, whatever, flying sharks, the eye uh, parasite, which is kind of cool. Um, another paper on capture, holding, and transport. And I would like to take this time to thank you all for, for listening and to thank the um, IEC program committee for giving us the opportunity to present to you all. Thank you so much.